Financing a car is one of the worst financial decisions that you can make, even though it's one of the most popular ways to buy a car, which is why I would do everything in my power not to finance a car. So let me explain what's going on and what I would do instead. If I wanted to get this $50,000 lopsided car that I drew, I have three options. I can buy this car cash, I can finance the car, or I can lease the car. And the option that I would absolutely avoid is financing the car for three reasons, which I'll explain in just a second. And if I wanted to lease the car, well, to me, leasing is kind of like flying first class. You're paying for the luxury of leasing the car, which is why if you're gonna lease the car for me, I wanna make sure I can buy at least five of these cars with cash, $250,000 in my bank account, if I wanted to go out and lease the car because I'm paying for the luxury of leasing the car, which leaves buying cash for the car. Now you might be thinking, but Jasprit, I don't have $50,000 to buy this car. Well, stick with me for just a minute. There are three reasons why I don't go out and finance the car. And the first reason is I'm paying interest on a car that is number two, losing value, that number three has a limited lifespan. Now, the argument for financing a car is, hey, you wanna buy this $50,000 car, you can put $8,000 down, keep the $42,000 in your pocket. Now you can take this $42,000 and invest it somewhere. So that way, now you can get some money from this money you kept in the bank. And now hopefully your investments can outperform the interest rate that you're paying on this car. The five to 10% in interest that you're getting on the car, hopefully you can get better returns on this or maybe you just don't have the $50,000, so now you can just put down $8,000 and I can drive a nice car. But it gets even better, take a look. The argument to finance a car gets even more attractive when you own a business because section 179 of the IRS tax code says that if you go out and buy a heavy car, you can deduct a huge chunk of that car today. So now, if you go out and you're an influencer and you go out and you finance this $150,000 G-Wagon because you need a G-Wagon to maintain your status as an influencer, and yes, many influencers do this day and night long because the tax code gives this type of gray area. Now what you can do is you put down $30,000 and then you finance the other $120,000. Now remember this $120,000 is still in your bank account because you're financing this, but you can take a $100,000 write off on your business taxes this year. So why would I say don't finance this car when you can get these types of tax benefits? Now, of course, these tax benefits can be nice, but let's go back to the three issues that I was talking about from a financial perspective, not a tax perspective, but a financial perspective on the vehicle itself. You're paying interest on something that's losing value with a limited lifespan. Let's dig a little bit deeper. The problem with something like your car versus something like a piece of real estate is that you know this car is going to lose value, especially if you're buying this car new. So as soon as you go to the lot and you put your keys in the ignition, that car is immediately gonna lose value from $50,000, it's gonna drop down to around $45,000. The minute you put the keys in the ignition and you sign the paperwork, you bought the car and you immediately lose $5,000 with the value. And then after one year, this car is gonna be worth around $40,000 dollars about ten thousand dollars less than what you bought it for and remember you're financing forty two thousand dollars after two years this car is going to be worth around thirty five thousand dollars after three years this car is going to be worth around thirty thousand dollars after four years this car is going to be worth around twenty six thousand dollars and after five years when you finally pay this car off it's going to be worth around twenty three thousand dollars now remember you financed $42,000 to get this car, which means, well, how much did you actually pay in interest? Let me wipe this off and show you. If you were to go out and finance this other $42,000 at a 5% interest rate after your car taxes, fees, and interest, it's gonna cost you $63,000 over the course of five years to pay off this car, which is now worth $23,000. And if you get a 10% interest rate, well, now it's gonna cost you just around $70,000 to pay off a car that's now worth $23,000. And now the problem is, if you remember number three, this car has a limited lifespan. You worked for the last five years to pay sixty-three dollars to $70,000 in interest on this car. You finally paid it off, but now you don't have an appreciating asset. You have a car that needs more maintenance, that needs more upgrades, that needs more care, 
and maybe it's time for you to start thinking about upgrading this car. So now what happens to a lot of people is you finally pay off the car, you finally have no car payments, and then you do what everybody else does. You go to trade it in to get a new car, and now you start this process all over again. So you now start playing this payments game of always paying money to the car dealership. BMW, Mercedes, Lexus, all these companies keep getting rich because you keep paying the money for the car, but then you're also paying money for the interest to finance the car that you didn't buy outright. This is why for me, I treat my car like a liability. I treat it like a shirt. If I wanna go out and buy a nice shirt, fine. I just wanna make sure that I can afford it first with cash. That means actually being able to afford the car with cash so I don't have to worry about the payments because those payments are now going into a car that's losing value. You have to pay interest on it and it has a limited lifespan. Now, you're probably saying, but Jasprit, I told you in the beginning of the video, I don't have $50,000 to go out and buy this car. Well, what you have to remember is you don't have to go out and drive a brand new $50,000 car if you don't have the money for it. See, this is something that's been created, especially because of Instagram, that everybody feels like they have to have a BMW, they have to have a luxury car, they have to have this really nice car, when the reality is, if you don't have the money for it, you shouldn't be driving those cars. You can go out and buy a used car that's a couple years old, get a much better deal on the car, and still have a good working condition car. And if you don't have the money for that, well then go out and buy a cheaper car. I can tell you from experience that there are cheaper cars out there. For example, at the time of me recording this video, I'm driving a 2007 Toyota Solara that's beat up, that's dense, there's multiple different types of rims on it, and it doesn't have a bumper on it. Now you might be saying, but Jasprit, what the heck? Can't you afford a nicer car? Yeah, I absolutely can. But my money has been going into five places. My money has been going into my own business. My money has been going into buy more rental properties. My money has been going into the stock market. My money has been going into my speculative investments, things like the startups that I invest in, things like cryptocurrency, and my money has been going into buy physical gold. So yeah, I have the cash to go out and buy a much nicer car with cash and not worry about it. But to me, I haven't needed that car yet. And for me, this has been going just fine which is why I've been putting my money into other assets because I know that car is gonna lose me money. My assets have been building my wealth and I didn't grow up with that financial education, which is why I've been so aggressive in building these assets and now I have a team of employees who drive better cars than I do. But to be fair, I will be buying a newer car this year in 2024 because, well, my car has seen its best days and now it's time for me to get myself a new car. So. This is where now understanding that you don't have to go out and pay thousands and thousands of dollars for a car. You can find a car that doesn't cost that much. I mean, the amount of money you're paying for your down payment, you can get a car for this money that will be reliable, that doesn't need a ton of maintenance. Look for a Toyota Corolla. Look for a used Toyota Camry. There are some great cars out there that will last you a long time, that will save you a ton of money, and now you can actually focus on building your wealth first. But I also wanna make sure that this is completely clear. I am not against you buying a nice car. I am not against you spending money on exotic and luxury things. I want you to have the exotic and luxury things. If you want to drive a Rolls Royce, great. I want you to go out and get it. But I want you to be able to afford it first. I want you to be able to afford that car with cash. And if you want to lease that car because you don't want to deal with the expense of maintenance on the car, you don't want to deal with the headache of that, fine. Just understand now that you're leasing this car, which is kind of like flying first class. If you want to fly first class, great but it's a luxury and you gotta make sure now you can afford that luxury. And if you wanna actually afford the luxury, what I like to follow is my rule of five, which says if you can't buy five of them, you can't afford one of them. Now, if you're wondering what my company is, I run a company called Briefs Media where we have a number of financial news and education products. Our flagship financial newsletter is called Market Briefs. You've probably heard me talk about that multiple times where every day my team is working to break down what's happening in things like the economy, the housing market, the stock market, the crypto market, and the global economy into a fun, witty, and easy to read newsletter. You can read Market Briefs in less than five minutes every morning and it's completely free. So if you'd like to join Market Briefs for free, I got the link to how you can join down in the description below where you can go to briefs.co slash market. That's briefs.co slash market. But before you go, I want to hear from you. What kind of car are you driving and are you happy with the financial cost of that car? Let me know down in the comments. You'd like to see car prices growing along with wages. That means people are spending the same amount of the income relative to that car price. But that's not what we saw over the last few years. We saw car prices shoot up much faster than wages, which is why even though we saw car prices fall in 2023, people still feel like cars are extremely expensive. 